Well, hello there. Today we are going to learn about Sue Patton's Plunk and Play, discuss choices in thread colors, and using stencils. So stay tuned. We have one talented lady with us today. We are so excited. <laughs> She is going to show us what she calls plunk and play, and I cannot wait, Sue Patton, to see awesome. what this is about. It's Sue has be been a friend of mine for so long, and we're just so excited to have we go her here. Way back. Way back. Way back. <laughs> <laughs> no, not that far. Not that far back, no. Yes. So, plunk and play, what is it? Okay, so you know how I like to do things really, really quickly. Yes. But I like them to look spectacular. And they always do. So we're and excited to see this. I love thread. Yes. OK, so this sort of came, the whole theory came from doing so many edge to edge. Oh, and a lot of people do that. Yes. And yes. it's quick, and it's efficient, mm -hmm. and it makes the quilt look fabulous. Mm -hmm. But I just needed to take it a level up. Of course. So <laughs> what I like to do is I like to take a specific design of any kind mm -hmm. and literally plunk it. So I'm just going to throw it different sections of the quilt. It's super simple. You can use stencils. You can pre-mark. If you have a Statler, mm -hmm. all these fabulous computerized machines, mm -hmm. you can just plunk one here, plunk a design here, plunk a design there, all different sizes. All Whatever different design textures, you want. Anything. Now this is, you're talking about edge to edge still. I'm talking about edge okay. to edge. Okay, okay. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to work around and through my designs in an edge-to-edge oh. -edge fashion. Okay. So super quick, super easy. I can increase my price just slightly because you take it to the next level. Mm -hmm. And you have these fabulous, sporadic, fun little textures all over the quilt. And you don't get bored. And this keeps it really bored. exciting. Yes. 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 And the main thing that I want people to understand is you just need to relax. It doesn't need to be preset. It doesn't need to be exactly lined up or perfect. You want to throw it on the quilt like this. So you don't have to do a lot of pre-planning. And I no. think people spend too much time thinking yes. about, you know, they're Far afraid they're time. going to mess up. Exactly. Okay. So, and then there's lots of ways that we can tackle it. So the first way I'm going to show you, and we'll talk a little bit about how to plunk and play into a custom quilt oh, good. a little further along. Great. So, okay. So we're just going to move these out of the way. Now, just so you guys know, super simple. I do not pre-mark anything. I'm not quilting it quilt twice. Okay. I'm going to throw my quilt top on here as if I was just going to run an edge-to-edge -edge design across it. Then I'm going to pull something, anything that coordinates with what my client wants. And these, are these your designs? These are my stencils. Cool. <laughs> yeah. So we'll do a little bit of information on them. Um, I like to have the different sizes though. Uh -huh. Or you could choose different designs that coordinate. Oh, okay. Okay, so okay. If, you were, if you were doing something that was featherish for your client, you could choose a feathered heart and a spiked heart. Give so it a little variety. A little pop here yes. and there, because that's all we want to do is spice it up a little bit. Mm -hmm. We don't want to make it difficult, okay? okay? So what I would do is I would just pounce. I, l okay. I literally just throw them down because okay. I'm not one of those consistently accurates. And this is a pounce pad. This is a pounce pad. And you're pad. using black. Now you could do a piece top up here too, right? Oh, I mean, this doesn't have to be whole cloth we're talking. Exactly. And 99.9% .9 of your edge to edge Are is gonna be going to be piece. Okay. So what I do, again, I don't, I just throw them. I okay. don't want it to look like I'm specifically placing them. So plunk. Just plunk them anywhere you want. <laughs> And then I'll choose a variegated, because I like the variegated. Mm -hmm. I'll choose something that's going to coordinate with as much of the fabric as I can. Okay. okay. Now I can also, the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to show you how we can, before we start our edge to edge, and of course I free motion, mm -hmm. so what if I wanted an almost custom, I could take some of these little designs and I could coordinate a darker or a lighter thread so that it pops even a little bit more. And then I can ah, get my thread play in there. A little contrast. Right. Especially okay. if there are some areas that might not be 100% perfect. Mm -hmm. Okay, so most people... Is that people, possible? I know all of mine that come in are perfect. And of course, all the ones I do, you know. But of course. <laughs> what I try to do is when I lay my quilt top out, instead of deciding what design I'm going to use first, 
I decide how much manipulation it's going to require to make sure my quilt's perfectly flat and square. Oh, good. Okay? Yes. Hence the different sizes. I might need a little bit of extra quilting on that block that Aunt Sally threw in. Mm -hmm. So that's or on the corner, maybe? In that corner, uh -huh. especially with those great borders added on. I might actually throw it so that it falls into the border. Oh, neat. To keep that corner flat. And that draws it in. Draws it all in. Cool. So fabric manipulation, fabric manipulation, mm -hmm. fabric manipulation. Okay. So what we're going to do first, and I, this is my favorite tool, white clover wash away pen. Ah. I can, and it's gone. And it's gone. Yes. Okay. And I just found out after 10 years of using it, because we learn every day, <laughs> you can steam it out. You don't need to really? spit on your quilt anymore. So it's okay <laughs> to steam, because a lot of things, the heat Absolutely. will set it in. Yes. So this was this is okay with the steam. And you know I do exclusive testing on anything that I use. Mm -hmm. So when I went to the wash away white clover, I hung it in my window, I left it in the trunk of the car to heat set. Yeah. All the things in my that life we shouldn't that do. <laughs> really happen. <laughs> I wanted to make sure it would come out. And okay. I've never had an issue. Silk, um, suede comes off of suede, any kind of cotton. So always pretest, really but have never had it come back in a moisture change either. Super. So and it's clear. Mm -hmm. I know exactly how much ink is in there. So wow. I don't start a project and run out of and ink out. halfway through. Okay, so enough talk, let's quilt. Okay. Okay, here we go. So what I've done is I've taken the small stencil, the smallest design, mm -hmm. and I've taken a dark color of variegated. So it has some pinks and it has some oranges and it has some purples. And what I'm going to do is this would be a higher end and I'm going to get right in here and I'm going to do a little bit of thread play. Okay. okay. So let's just start her up. You can start anywhere because this will be one of those situations where we're going to stop and start. So I'm plunking, casting off, mm -hmm. and then edge to edge quilting around it. Okay. And then we'll go on and I'll show you how to hit it as we go if you're using all the same color of variegated. Okay. Okay. So we're just gonna get right in here and I'm simply going to relax and I'm gonna do just a couple of different strokes. I'm not going to be overly concerned. We're just going to relax and have fun. You don't have to stay right on the same line. Oh no, that You're line's okay? going to disappear. Okay. Well, I like that. Yeah. I really want absolute no stress. I okay. want it to be fun again. If it's not fun, you know? Then yeah, yeah. you need to find something else to do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think that what happens is we buy these, you know, gazillion dollar machines because we love to quilt. Then we start the panic. Uh-huh. And all that fun gets blown out the window. Yeah. So when I'm doing, especially an edged edge or quilt for the kid's bed, I just want to go in there and have some fun with it. I don't want any stress at all. So you're going over each line two, three times? Yep, just depending, depending on, on how want. much thickness. Okay. Um, I'm a little bit neurotic when it comes to the variegated colors. I like to try really hard to control where those colors are going. Oh, man. Yeah. Are you sure that's not stressful? It's not. It's <laughs> fun. Now, now are you use, what are you using in the bobbin? Right now, I'm just using a basic black pre-wound. Okay. So if you're going to use the pre-wound, and you're gonna do any kind of thread play, I like to match the color of the pre-wound as close to the top fabric as humanly possible. Oh, okay, that's a good rule. Okay. Yeah. Now, we could do single line as well on this. Mm -hmm. And then go back on it or just keep? You could just leave it as a single line. Okay. Or you could go back again and go really, really thick. We could go in here and actually do some thread play or create something fun inside of it. But again, remember time, how much money is being spent to actually complete the quilt if it's for a customer. You could just come in. And I notice that you're in constant speed. Oh, absolutely. Um, I, You know, Linda, when I started, there was really no stitch regulator to be heard. And I started non-stitch regulator. I love the sound, I love the feel, and I've just never jumped the wagon and gone to that stitch regulator. 
I well, that's good to know. There are a lot of people who don't have stitch regulators, but even those who do sometimes um, won't try the exactly. constant. And I think that there's a reason that we have all of this, you know? And I so. try very hard to tell my students, when you get your machine, you need to practice a non-stitch regulated mode. The non-stitch regulated mode allows you to learn to move at a consistent speed. So when people go into their stitch regulated mode, mm -hmm. what happens is, is their movement is nice and smooth and consistent, and that machine doesn't rev up and down. Oh, and that can drive you crazy. Absolutely. You, know, you feel like you're... And it's not that the machine can't handle the slow and fast movement, but the smoother the, the movement is, the more consistent it is, the better the stitch, the more relaxed you are. The and better the, the design stress. work. Oh, yeah. absolutely. I think absolutely. so too. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is I'm going to switch out my threads. I'm gonna go from a bright variegated of the pinks and the oranges and the purples, mm -hmm. and I'm going to go to identical colors in softer hues. Ooh, pretty. Yes, and what we'll do this time is we will actually work our way across doing free motion edge to edge, tackling the plunk and play as we hit it. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is I'm just gonna jump right in. I'm gonna start my edge to edge procedure right inside the design of choice. I'm gonna simply trace around it very quickly, just once. I'm going to jump out and I'm just gonna continue the rest of the row free motion, edge to edge quilting. So let's go. Okay. You might wanna jump out of the way. I'll you know jump. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try and stitch slowly. Oh yes, I noticed that you're stitching so Very slow. Very slow. <laughs> but I'm still gonna travel pretty quick. Okay. Okay, so here we go. We're just, again, super relaxed. Enjoy mm. it. It's not rocket science, it's quilting. Okay, okay. let's go. That really is a pretty little design too. I love it. Isn't that cute? Yes. It's just fun. It's got your points in it and your little curls. Some of it kind of looks a little bit hardish, but then you've got that nice jagged peak that I love in there. You come up and around. And this design's a little bigger than the other one yes. that you were doing. And now, see how I am sort of adding my own little texture in there. Uh huh. This is how I would be quilting it. I would not be going right on that line. Worried about that right. stain exactly on the line. I'd be and doing some ribbon in there. Ooh. Twisting around. It's just an outline. It's more of a suggestion, really. But it gives you some structure. Gives you a little bit of structure. It's great. And it keeps it nice and open so that we are creating that difference in texture where the next little set of things I'm gonna do will be a little bit tighter. Now I'm just gonna come out and I'm just gonna start creating an all over edge to edge design. Did you have this in mind before you started or you're, this is all just freehand you know, out I of like your... to just go with the flow. Okay. So whatever fills the space is basically what I'm gonna do. So the idea is keep the motor running. Exactly. Think ahead. Don't plan ahead, but think ahead. Now I'm just gonna keep watching. I came around the inside of my preset design. So now, when I travel out to fill in that space freeform, it doesn't jump out and hit you. It looks as though it was intentionally planned to be that way, which of course it was. <laughs> now I'm gonna jump through on this side so I can travel around this way. Now I'm gonna come up and I'm gonna do a little bit of a spine and I'm just going to start filling in my spaces. I like to be consistently inconsistent, but I'm constantly in this section going to pull in that little ribbon that I created around that inside design. I'm watching my fabric so that I can manipulate everything to lay nice and flat.
going to come around in here and back down. And you're just filling the space as you hit it. Looks like you're doing swirls and some ferns and just really combining some fun things together. Absolutely. And I'm just pushing the fabric around. So the left hand is just a helper there to manipulate the fabric if needed. Absolutely. And of course, at home, it would be the hand that was holding the coffee cup. <laughs> OK, and we're going to come back in here. That is so cool, Sue. Yes, so you have a design yes. here, and then you have your freehand around it, so you can Absolutely. pick that out. Or Exactly. That's now, great. Look what happens as I work my way around. My edge to edge is one consistency, but this is just going to be a subtle pop mm -hmm. every time. Mm -hmm. Now, again, we've got a panic area here, and I just want to show my viewers how I'm going to deal with this. Again, I'm going to use that spine and work my way out of, instead of getting trapped, inside. Inside, getting yourself cornered. Absolutely. I always travel with my spine, and then I fill in around that spine space. You don't have to have the same design on every single section. Now, of course, what I'm going to do here, I'm not going to get back to this area. So I'm going to tackle it right now before I move on. Won't pass that way again, right? That's right. That's right. And I don't want to get stuck to a point where I have to cast on and cast off to get back into that little section. Mm -hmm. So it's okay to go over your line, you know, across your lines, and Absolutely. that's all right? Absolutely. Terrific. Now, I do try very hard to cross over where it's appropriate. I would not cross over in the middle through a design. Mm -hmm. Bottom of a spine, anywhere where there's a ribbon twist, is the perfect spot to cross over into the next section. So and right there, you just cross. Always crossed. at the bottom. All right. OK. You're just going to work all the way around. This is too much fun. <laughs> and it's so easy. You know, there's no stress here. I'm using one hand, a finger, and a thumb. At home, I would have my music on, enjoying my coffee. But people can use two hands. Oh, they could if yes? they wanted to. Okay. You know, if they didn't have M&Ms in a bowl <laughs> beside them, they could absolutely <laughs> utilize both hands. And we'll come down. Swirl again. So you just continue across like that? All Whatever the way across. Want. Terrific. Now, once you get to this end, we're simply going to roll it up. We're going to throw down one of our sizes, stencil over it, and stitch all the way back across. I love it. Isn't that great? Yes. Okay, so now, it, can we take some time? I'm going to show you how to take this sort of to the next level. So if you were custom quilting, you can still use these great plunk and plike ideas and then thinking outside of the box, you can pre-plan or you can throw in plunk specific design ideas to highlight areas of that custom quilt and then just complete it in the normal fashion. So plunk and play with custom quilting. Custom play with plunk and, yes, with custom quilting. <laughs> wow, that's a mouthful. <laughs> okay, let's do All that. All right, let's do that. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take a full quilt, and of course mine are small because there wasn't a whole lot of room in the trunk. <laughs> <laughs> and what I want you to start thinking is how you could plunk a design or a shape or a motif or your favorite embroidery design or your favorite Statler design into specific areas of the quilt. Now, not necessarily like back here, where we've put it right in the center of the block, but let's just start randomly placing them. So as you can see here, I have my actual custom quilting in the main base of the center. Then I've plunked specific thread art designs. Then I've gone so far as to plunk all tiny little circles and little tiny flowers. 
and then gone in and quilted everything in behind it. You know, what I really like too is that you've taken half designs like on in the border. You've Absolutely. brought those in so they're not always full. And that just just really is appealing to the eye. So remember how technological and how tricky and difficult this is. Here's the strategy. Plunk and play. <laughs> so if my circle falls half into the yellow zone and half into the blue zone, then I might choose just to stitch and do some play in the blue zone or just put some blue thread in the yellow zone, okay? Try to think out of the norm. We're not centering, we're not pre-positioning. We're literally going to take, for this one, a set of different size circles. We're going to plunk them in areas. Then we're gonna go inside those areas and play. Okay, so of course I like to choose my templates or my design segments so that they have a multitude of different sizes. So they go from very, very small all the way out to nice and thick. I actually use a design tool that's very thin because I am not using a base and bringing my machine around it. Where if you wanted to use your base, you could use a thicker and put your base on your machine and you could, you could travel around the outside of this and make a perfect circle. I'm going to use my little drawing tool We'll slide over here a little bit. So I'm just going to take my white wash away. I'm going to position, and I'm simply going to, that one's too little, let's put this one in here. I'm just going to draw around that circle. And notice how I'm not panicking. I'm just making an area to stitch in. I like to try and keep all of these sections in close together so that I have a continuous line to slide in and out of each of the little sections as I'm stitching. Now before I start to stitch, I'm going to show you some thread choices that I would use. I like to choose my variegated first and we will again, we're going to tell you all the codes and all the numbers for these in case you want to try it at home. I would choose my variegated. Now this variegated has a purple, a blue, and a little bit of green in it. It's so very subtle. Very yes, subtle. Yes. I'm going to use this for my background fill to intensify sections. So I'm going to choose two to three solids. So I'm going to choose this purple, the purple we have on the machine now that you'll see me stitch out, and this fabulous green because mm. I like something to jump. My favorite green. <laughs> oh, it just pops right out. <laughs> now you could also go completely different and we might throw this into one of the little background areas as well. But what we're going to do now, so I'm going to move this thread out of the way and we are going to make these little group of circles jump, pop and dance with some thread. Try to remember that all you are doing is creating texture. Try not to get so caught up on the design itself that you're spending hours and hours and hours interpreting what's going to go in there. In your open areas like this, try to pull from your sashing ideas. So anything that you do well in a sashing, you could absolutely throw inside of these. So you don't have to go around the circle. No, oh, absolutely good. not. Now you could, definitely, if you wanted to trace it out. Um, Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. It all depends on which way the wind's blowing and how much manipulation that fabric actually needs. So if I had a section on my quilt that I wanted to lay flat and maybe it wasn't quite fitting into the space that it was already in, I might then outline first and then go in and do my design. Now what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna come in here and I'm simply going to start filling that area in right away with a nice, light, open design concept. So anything quiltish, anything that you stitch on a regular basis, maybe something that you're gonna put into one of the other areas of the quilt. I'm gonna come in here, make a nice little stipplish area along the spine, 
And then I'm just gonna work my way back down and into the next section where I will continue to go around through here. Now you could change your thread colors each time if you wanted to. You could, instead of doing just all these little bubbles, let's do another idea. Let's come all the way around and all the way down. And now let's use that as our spine and come up and use that inside circle just as a base for our design concept. Now, you can do, you know, the whole thing coming around clockwise. I like to switch it up so that I'm traveling in a different direction on the way down. So that it really appears as though I've stopped and started, even though we all know that I have not done that, okay? Now, you could also come out Come all the way around here. You're so smooth when you do those circles. Huh? Whoops! <laughs> and as soon as you say that, <laughs> I slide around. Okay, and you could fill in the inside. Around, back, down. 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 Yes, I talk to myself when I quilt. So do I. Isn't that great? It just helps your brain to decide how large that little space has got to be. And your brain reacts to sound the same as it reacts to touch. So whoosh, 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 whoosh. It just helps our brains determine what direction, what size, what we want to fill in there. Now, of course, I would choose specific designs to fill in each section. I might even go around more than once to make it a nice thick line to create different textures, adding in as I go, but always ending up in and around the same area so that I could continually be quilting. No stopping. No stopping and starting. That's really looking very pretty. Okay, now let's just talk about the outside. I would definitely go around and make a nice thick outer section, but then what I want to do is I want to enclose that design. So I'm going to come up with something very simple that works all the way around. So I'm just going to go bump over back, bump over back, bump over back, and make a little, almost like a lace doily around the outside so that it absolutely encloses whatever I have played on in that section to complete the design. So it doesn't look like I've just thrown it somewhere and then left it not completed. Come all the way around. Notice I'm not panicking about all of them being the same size. It's art. You could, if you were so much inclined, if you were one of those consistently accurate people, you could absolutely pre-mark this to look very similar. Now, if that wasn't enough, if that was just a little too foofy or a little too soft for you, you could absolutely come in and get some spike action happening. Come all the way around. I want you to start thinking fun. When I get going on my custom quilting, it's just a matter of knowing when to stop. Because I could literally spend the days and days and days just playing inside my plunk areas and forget about the rest of the quilt. So do you do that with your, since you still do customer quilts, do you? I actually have not done um, commission customer quilts now for about two years. Okay. I still do quilts for other people's books and magazine covers and stuff like that. You know, when you travel as much as we do on the road, I'm on the road about nine months out of the year. Oh my goodness. When I go oh. home, I want to just enjoy the time with my kids and have some time to be creative on my own. Do you have any idea how many UFOs I have? <laughs> 
<laughs> it's funny, and don't tell anyone because it's a secret, uh -huh. but I have quilters. <laughs> so to get those so edge to edge quilters, quilters. To get them done. yeah, I still quilt by check. <laughs> That's okay. I just oh. know that there are people out there who do quilt, um, you know, for the public, and so the extra stuff that you would do, like going around it again, would depend maybe on the price that they absolutely. Pay you. you have to remember that everything that I'm showing you, each level is an absolute increase in your pricing if you're quilting for customers. Mm -hmm. And we don't want to undercut ourselves. No. As much fun as we want to have, we want to be able to afford boots at the end of the day. That's right. <laughs> we want to pay the mortgage, buy more fabric. So absolutely, in and around, run somewhere between, find out exactly what your customer's looking for, what he or she, the intensity that they want, and then meet them in a section. You might just do one center plunk and play. You might just do a plunk and play in the top right hand corner and the bottom left hand corner, and then just do minimal custom everywhere else. Mm -hmm. So that it looks like they're getting a whole lot extra, and it looks spectacular, but it's not taking a lot of time. And then next time, if they really like it, they'll be willing to pay a little they'll more. They'll go up a little bit That's more. That's great. So now the first piece that we showed before we started playing, it was very intense. There was a lot mm -hmm. of thread art, a lot of thread. It doesn't have to be that intense. We could just do a little bit of outline plunk and play. So what we have here is that same idea. And what I've done is I've done a couple more sections or rows of those circles and then just single design all the way around, all the way out. But my main piece is done in the center section of this quilt. Whereas on the corner pieces, and this is the back, I like to use same thread front and back so that when you flip it, you've got that whole cloth look on the back. It looks so beautiful Isn't that too. cool? Yes. So if I turn this over, you can see this is just a big open block. But I have no background quilting. I simply have an outline, a play, and some little guys just plunked in on the side. Now I can go in and do my normal custom quilting in all my half square triangles and in all the sections of the quilt. So I really just have five little areas that are highlighted. You can even go as minimal as this section right here, where I've simply just thrown in half a circle, a little bit of edging, a little circle here, and just enough to tack it down. So I like that contrast. And I also like the way you brought in the coral color thread and, and just combined those so beautifully. Now, I will tell you, I do charge an extra fee when I'm quilting mm -hmm. for customers for that thread change. So the first color is free. Mm -hmm. Every color after that is a $15 charge. Okay. So, you know, if you have three colors, that's an extra $30. Mm -hmm. That first cone is free, but it really adds a whole lot of depth and texture oh, yeah. without adding a whole lot of time. It made that quilt just yes, beautiful. absolutely. Oh, thank you so much. Oh, I'm for so showing glad you brought me back. Yes. Oh, I, just, um, I know the viewers are going to be just as excited as I am about these plunk and play the plunk ideas. Plunk and play. Yes. And start thinking outside that box. You know, these little plunks could be anywhere. One here, one there, little just in the borders is spectacular. And we really like that <sighs> casual attitude as well and not, not the stressful. Oh, no stress. So thank you for bringing no the less stress into our lives. Thank you. <laughs> see you next time. Thanks. We'll see you again.